on Saturday, September 22nd, 2012. I'm back in Jamaica after a week. I've been on vacation. I will be on vacation for quite some time, living somewhere else, and I will not be doing, doing much videotaping. But right here is the office of New York State Senator Shirley L. Huntley at the Chase Bank at 161-10 Jamaica Avenue, and I put her out of business. The only problem is, I'd like to say I'm sorry. I'd like to say I'm sorry to the staffers of Mr. Lester Mews. That's another veteran. That's another ranger. I didn't mean to hurt you. Um, uh, there's lots of other people there. All those cute hot babes now get a chance to actually go do exactly what they want to do, which is to look hot, all right? And they don't do much else because nobody paid attention to me. Um, Monica Pringle, Deputy Chief of Staff, gets a chance to go into retirement. She's over 62 years old. Um, good luck to you, my dear. Um, and uh, all, all of those people that's going to lose their jobs, I'm sorry, but you got to find you a better boss. You got to find you an honest boss. I'm right here. The police is right here, as you can see. I have no problems. I'm not a fugitive. I'm a good guy. I'm back in Jamaica. It's no different than any other poor ethnic community in America. It's an absolute abomination. It's a piece of crap. And uh, they got all these poor folk. They're all ethnic. They're all ethnic. They come to America by crossing the border. They invaded this community. They ran all the black folks out. All these stores right here. Okay. They don't hire too many black people. They're not owned by black people. Black people are under siege. They're about the only thing black people are good serve for is security. And we see all that. Okay. They got Negro Garden their stuff. This is a black owned business right here. It's a veteran brother of mine right there. What's happening, man? All right. I'm out of here. You have a good one. And down there, that's the Spanish block. The next block, 164. That's the church block. That's another Spanish block. They done routed black folk. And the black leaders here in this community think that just because they look like this, they're real small and all of that, they will invade your community and they will rot your black behind. Black people, they got white people that own the places, they'll sweep the floors, but they got the black woman, black man, guarding the money, guarding the money, guarding the money, and that's what we're talking about. There you go, howdy. Right? You can't be a mom and you dressing like that. Come on now. When you're a mom and you got your ass all out like that in the street, what does that say to your children? There's a total lack of morality. It's absolute vanity. And black folks are the ones to blame. It's their fault. You picked your black leaders and you're stupid. They're actually stupid because it don't make no kind of sense that you out here are voting for these black Democrats and these black Democrats won't lift a finger to help you. It's all about them in power, going to parties, getting dressed up, acting like what they want to do. That's a black business right there. All these other businesses in these stores are not owned by black people. Nothing. Negroes got nothing here other than a right to come and pay money to get the guys that come from Israel, they come from all these other places that America will give money to to open up businesses and black guys don't get jacked. But they got people that's breeding for them. They got people breeding for them. They got black people breeding for them. And you're stupid. You're stupid. Because for crying out loud, how in the heck are you going to keep breeding a black slave to suffer as a fifth-class citizen 
because black people went from number two when I got here in 1967 and African Americans that went to number five. Gone to number five. Now when you're at number five, all right now, when you're at number five, you're at the bottom. Now, we had the mulatto, we got the mulattoes. I mean a lot of mulattoes. And that's from slavers having a captive audience of black people and they're just raping black women. My entire new breed of house nigs and not light skinned house nigs began inbreeding to commit to create the mulatto race. Okay, that's nice. Then what you got now is that the black guys don't have jobs, so the black women go into the Mexicans. The Mexicans don't even hardly have to pay taxes. Why? Because they take these jobs that pay cash and the black babes are hot. I mean, the black babes are hot. Look at that right there. Look at that. That's nice. That's hot. That's hot. But then, all that tight ass right there, you don't do nothing but signal that you selling something. And they, cur and they carry that currency. They carry that currency right here. Right here. Look at that. Look at that. Ain't that hot? Ain't that hot? Ain't that hot? That's hot. That's hot. And she'll go with a Mexican because the Mexican got money. Black guys ain't got no money. Black guys ain't got no money. And so therefore, we got a brand new phenomenon happening in America. But this is the beginning of a new creation of a new race called the Black Sickens. Okay, that's when a black person mixes with a Mexican. And you got a whole group of them that will begin to inbreed and create a brand new race called the Black Sicken Race. Absolute abomination. All right, bro. How you doing, man? All right? That's right. So, I'm well known in the community, and I got to leave here. I'm gone. That's it. Just wanted to tell you, all the cheap. That's right. Hair design. Cheap stuff. That's all there is. That's all there is out here. And black people ain't got nothing else to do here but shop. They don't own nothing. They ain't never going to own nothing. They never owned anything before. And they're lost. They are lost. Congratulations, America. And congratulations to black elected officials. And co congratulations to Barack Hussein Obama on being able to fool the people about change. I create change. You lied to me. You lied to everybody else. Bye-bye.